We begin with a poem by William Blake, the late 18th century, early 19th century romantic poet in Britain, titled The Sick Rose. Before we look at the poem, it's helpful to remember that William Blake believed in what he called the two contrary sides of the human soul, sides that he termed innocence and experience. He even published two of his collections of verse titled Songs of Innocence and Songs of Experience, where he has several poems in Songs of Innocence, uh, like The Lamb, uh, that are associated with purity, peacefulness, harmony, light, childhood, elements of the human experience that he deemed to be filled with meaning, but of a calming and more assured, more confident and faithful side, particularly with his view of God and of the Bible. On the contrary, he had songs of experience as well, filled with poems like The Tiger and The Fly, uh, poems that examine corruption and decay, sinfulness, aging and adulthood, and even civilization, uh, that civilized man, uh, man in his adulthood, man in his prime, may have lost something in his childhood that was quite necessary, that of innocence and purity. The Sick Rose is a poem from Songs of Experience. So in it we see Blake observing and examining that uh, depraved or corroded or corrupted view of, or side rather, of the human soul. And it's a short poem, two quatrains. He opens the poem with an apostrophe to the rose. An apostrophe being a direct address to an absent or inanimate object, in this case the rose. And it turns out to be a lament. Blake is lamenting or mourning a sick rose. And already there with symbolism that is implied, Blake is putting forward his central thought that what was once lovely and beautiful and full of meaning and romance, the image of a rose, is now sick or decaying or dying in fact. And uh, that movement from loveliness and beauty and splendor to corruption and aging and destruction ultimately was one that commanded mourning, or demanded mourning, I should say, uh, that we see by the end of the poem, we have a life destroyed. So the reader can anticipate where Blake's movement in this poem may be headed. He says, O Rose, thou art sick, and then he spends the rest of the, of the stanza outlining what has caused the illness. He says, The invisible worm that flies in the night in the howling storm has done something. And he moves to a second stanza to explain what that worm has done. But already Blake has clued us into several key descriptors to embody or to give life to or give a character to what has corroded or destroyed this beautiful rose. He says it is the invisible worm that flies through a howling storm at night. And with invisibility, already a sense of fear and a sense of uncertainty is provoked, but also with the worm that flies in the night in the howling storm. We already have a great deal of associations summoned forth, that of darkness, perhaps even evil or sinfulness, with the worm being an agent of death perhaps even ultimate evil in Satan himself. Satan is the serpent of Eden, sometimes referred to as a worm. And the fact that he howl, he flies through the howling storm at night to penetrate and embed himself into the heart of this rose is a very invasive and threatening and aggressive scene that is not too far from a reading of evil and death penetrating deep into the life of things, the very heart of beauty and the garden image of the rose and of the worm is one that brings to mind the Genesis account of Eden. And it's in line five where Blake brings about the sadness of the poem. This worm that has flown through the night and has landed and 
nestled itself deep into the heart of this rose, has found out thy bed. Quite literally, discovered it. He has unraveled or exposed the very heart of, the very essence and center of this poor rose. So the worm embeds itself in the rose, finds out its bed. Which we might have two meanings here. One being the bed of the rose, the literal center of it. But then secondly, you have the image of the marriage, the marital bed being found out or being uncovered, discovered. And that has a sense of defeat or vulnerability to it or harm that this worm has robbed the bed of the rose, the very soul and heart and most intimate innermost uh, meaning of it. Blake says, the worm has found out thy bed of crimson joy and his dark secret love does thy life destroy. destroy. Uh, the pronoun here, that it's the worm's dark secret love. We say love lightly because Blake ironically calls it love. We know it not to be the case at all. Is an agent of destruction to the life of the rose. So a great deal of uh, antagonism in this poem between two opponents, the, the rose and the worm, most literally, but also you have uh, sexuality being defeated or destroyed or corroded from within. You have the phallic symbol of the worm flying through the night into the heart of the rose to find out its bed. Blake's perhaps depiction of how something like love and sexuality can be exploited, can be destroyed. But also what experience can do to innocence. There's perhaps no greater symbol of innocence and romance and loveliness than a pure rose. And yet, in the course of this poem, it is destroyed. It moves from sickness to death and destruction by this agent of experience. But also, remember Blake is a romantic poet. That it's not a far reading to see this as nature being destroyed or exploited by some invading uh, character, some invading uh, agent, whether that be uh, the depravity of man, whether that be civilization itself tears down roses, uh, that's, not a, that's not hard to, to imagine with the uh, looming advance of industrialization ahead of Blake and ahead of these romantics to see something pure and lovely like nature be tread upon and invaded and destroyed by some external influence. Blake, in just two stanzas, is able to depict this sick rose as a meaningful symbol of a wide array of things that are quite dear to the human experience. Our own childhood and innocence being lost, perhaps. Our own virginity and sexuality being corroded or tainted. Uh, and perhaps even the world itself, nature itself, being victim to uh, some penetrative, invasive force that this sick rose becomes a meaningful, rich, and uh, multi-layered symbol for uh, the human soul, in fact.